You're spending eight hours every day working for some soulless corporation. You're saving every piece of money that you're making every month. You invest all of it in stocks instead of investing in yourself. You're scrolling reels on social media for two hours on average every single day, wasting two to three hours of your day commuting to and from the office and then wondering why are you stuck in the same loop? Why are you not getting richer? Why are you not getting anywhere ahead in life? Well, that is the mindset of majority of Indians working in this day. On the other hand, Elon Musk in 2022 added over a hundred billion dollars in net worth. But what is it that differentiates billionaires like Elon Musk and others from you? It's not like they're working more hours than you. It is what they chose to work on that got them where they are in life. Hi everyone, I'm Ishan Sharma and this is an in-depth video that I'm making today to talk about how can you become a karodpati in India in 2024 from scratch. I'll be sharing my own experiences. I'll be sharing everything I've learned about how do you make money and how do you spot interesting business ideas and then execute on them and create profit out there. Please watch this video till the very end and share it with your friends, with your siblings, with your parents and make them aware of what the opportunity really is. Let's first understand the mindset that you've been conditioned to because of education, because of the society, because of the friends, because of the parents that you've been around with. The way you look at education is I will do this degree, I will do this course and I will make money. Whereas the businessmen out there who are making buttloads of money are actually looking at education everywhere around them. While most people end their education on the day of graduation, that is the day where most businessmen start their education. They try to learn as much as possible from everyone around them. Number two, time. Most of you think of time as a commodity that you can spend wherever you want and you trade time for actually making money. On the other hand, the top 1% are very conscious of the way they spend their time with people, on the resources and on the work that they are doing. For them, it is their most valuable asset. Number three, money. For the majority of my childhood at least, I was told that money is scarce and must always be protected. You must always try to save as much money as possible so that then you can use it for your future. Whereas for the top 1%, money is a tool that they can see everywhere around them. It's an abundant tool that helps them live a better life. Instead of saying, I cannot afford this, they say, how can I afford this? And that opens up their doors of imagination into various ideas that they can tap into to get what they want in life. Number four, debt. Now my parents and my society has taught me that debt is evil. You must not have a credit card. It is the root of all evil and will actually bankrupt you. That is the conditioning I've been dealt with. On the other hand, the top 1% look as debt and loans as a way to build their own assets. Look at the richest people out there in India and have a look at the loans that they have to repay right now. Any person with a middle class thinking will always look at that and be like, Bhai, kya kar rahe banda? On the other hand, they are using debt to grow and scale their business exponentially. Most of us with a middle class thinking think of retiring at the age of 60 with enough money to you know help them with their old age but most of the top 1% are thinking of how can they get rich early on. Get rich fast is possible get rich easy is not is what I learned from Millionaire Fastlane amazing book that you should always be reading the wealth equation for the middle class and the top 1% looks very different if you're working in a job your wealth equation looks like this you have income then you have minus expenses minus taxes I've been taught for as long as I can remember to reduce the expenses as much as possible and pay your taxes on time and ensure that you're having a decent income on the other hand the top 1% are always thinking about how can they 10x their income and how can they smartly use the rules to pay less taxes. So let's now talk about how can you transition from that middle class mindset to the top 1%. The first and the most important thing is to create an entity. Most of you have been working as an individual job seeker. Whereas on the other hand, if you incorporate yourself, I have incorporated myself, I have a sole proprietorship, which is for me and my YouTube. On the other hand, I have my business, which is called Market Up. That is a private limited entity, wherein I work as an employee. I pay myself as an employee. This might look like a very small difference, but this is where the riches are made. Instead of taking a salary, I take dividends. I have never taken a single rupee as a salary from MarketUp, but however, whenever I want, I can take dividends and that is 
what you need to understand. The top 1% have learned the secrets of business and money and have been passing it on from one generation to the other. Now it is time for you to be aware of the same. The most important thing to understand in 2024, if you're starting a business, you need to be distribution first. You need to have a distribution on social media platforms like LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and only then can you succeed. Forget about running ads to make money. The secret here is by creating your own distribution channels and then launching things with it. The best examples are Skims. Skims is a brand by Kim Kardashian, which is valued at $4.1 billion. She's making tens of millions of dollars every single week and she's doing it all organically. It was possible because she built a huge distribution channel on Instagram and other platforms. Number two, Feastables by Mr. Beast. Again, he built a simple chocolate brand. He had the distribution, he launched it, immediate success, millions of dollars of revenue. Another example is Blanco launched by I Feel King. You might have you know, heard his songs, but King launched his own fragrances and perfumes and it worked amazingly well because he already had a distribution and audience. You need to figure out how can you get distribution and then later think about how can you sell? What do you need to sell to them to make money? Physics Wala is the best example of building distribution first and then selling later. He built that brand for himself that people would want to watch him live selling a course. They were two lakh people. I literally saw this one day and they were watching him pitch a course that he was selling. It is amazing how you can reduce your marketing budget down to zero if you just focus on building a brand of yourself that people would want to attach them with you. So focus always on building a brand, on being distribution first, and that is going to help you win in this market. Now you might be like, okay, Shan, that was all great. I understood everything, but how do I start? What do I look at? How do I find an idea that I can execute on? Well, hear me out. This is what you need to do. First of all, you need to understand that focus is the most important thing. Focus is what gets you to building huge businesses. There are so many of us who are busy on 20 different business ideas and trying out 20 different things. Believe me, that will never end up well. You will always be sacrificing on something or the other and it is very important that you focus at one place and go all in with it. The problem is that you are not going all in and then you're complaining that things are not working for you. Things will work when you go all in in that one particular business. I learned this the hard way by launching another business called as Centora. It did not really work well because I was not able to give in my 100% on that one project and I was also not able to give adequate time to market up and my YouTube channel. So everything suffered right? Everything suffers whenever you start something new. So you have to understand that focus in business is the most important key to understand. Also, you need to understand this one thing that while you are giving 70% of your time to something, there is someone out there in this world who is competing with you in the same product lineup and they are giving their 100%. How on earth do you think you can compete with that person by giving just 70% of your time and effort. Just think about that for a moment. It's a very popular saying called as the shiny object syndrome, wherein you are attracted by every new thing or the other. Whenever you start executing on one idea, you will realize that first of all, you have this optimism, right? When you don't know the difficulties of the business, you're like, people are making amazing money in it. I will go all in with it. You start working on it. You start realizing that there are a lot of difficulties. There are problems that you will face. Your excitement goes down. And that is when people leave this idea and they go on to another amazing looking idea, which looks amazing at first. And then you understand the realities of running it. The problem is you're not sticking to one thing and hence you are not able to see any sizable returns. You look back on any company out there, which has failed. We work died because of the lack of focus on their main business. They opened too many different entities. Under Armour was about to beat Nike as the top sportswear brand. They lost the battle because they got distracted with becoming a tech company instead of being a wearables company. The examples are everywhere. The bottom line is focus is the most important thing in business. Another thing to understand is the law of affection. It basically says the more people you impact, the more there are chances for you to make more money. If you impact a million people, you can be a millionaire. If you charge a high ticket product to very small number of people, you're acting on magnitude. So every single sale is a, you know, three digit, four digit, five digit dollar amount. You're working with hundred people and charging them a high ticket product. That is how you become a millionaire. But if you want to become a billionaire with a B, 
you need to have scale and magnitude and when you combine both of them that is when you unlock real wealth and that is what the law of affection is all about whenever you think of any idea think about these five rules and it should pass through all of them there is a rule of control rule of entry rule of need rule of time rule of scale rule of control basically means if you don't have control of every single part of the business you do not have a business it will just not work it will not unlock the true riches that you're looking out for there were multi million dollar companies who were creating games on facebook back in 2012 and 2013 they were dependent on facebook as a platform and then instantly facebook said we don't want to have games on the platform and overnight all of the businesses were shut because they lacked the law of control they were just not in control of the you know platform on which they were building they were building their castle on sand and it was born to fail and that is law of control number 2 is the law of entry if anyone can enter your business the next day in just a very short amount of time with no barrier you are in the wrong business if anyone can duplicate your business overnight you are in the wrong business then we have the law of need which basically says people who you want to sell to should desperately need your product it should solve their pain point and they should be hungry to buy it up that is the only way for you to make a lot of money if they sort of want it they wouldn't really want to purchase it if you increase the price they would choose any other person who is offering it for cheaper but if your product is the answer to a very painful problem that they are facing they will go all in and purchase it without a problem so always look for markets which are growing and which are also having these hungry customers it's much better to sell to a group of a thousand people who desperately need your product than to selling it to a million people who sort of want your product right i hope i'm making some sense if i am hit the like button the next rule is the rule of time your business should operate without you being in it most people are working in their business and not on their business that is a very important thing to understand if you go out on a one week vacation is your business still churning the revenue is it still operating and if it is not that is a huge problem to solve see as long as the success of your business is tied with your time and energy you don't really have a business you just have a glorified job Today I'm taking a flight to Malaysia and Bali for the next 14 days I'll be outside my business would still be operating every single day because I've created processes I have people I have algorithms working for me every single day even when I'm not working on it this is the most important thing to understand and then you have the rule of scale which again goes back to the law of affection either you should have scale or you should have magnitude or the best thing you can do is to have magnitude as well as scale and that is how you build billion dollar companies out there the most important thing to understand here is you need to scale your business without your time involved in it whenever you want to scale your idea you need to have these four leverages in place number 1 is human labor instead of me working on editing my video i have hired video editors who are working tirelessly every single day to ensure the best content goes out that is me leveraging human labor to get things done so that my time is not really needed it's a great way to scale but it is permission based i will need to ask permission for them to work for me number 1 number 2 it does not scale very well as you start having more videos you need to add more editors so it is a linearly scaling graph it's not a exponentially scaling graph number 2 is capital let's say that you run a salon in bangalore and you want to grow it and have its branches everywhere in delhi mumbai kolkata and every other place in the country in that case you will need to ask for loans and debt it is a great thing to do but the problem is it is still depending on the permission only if the bank allows you will get that money if they do not then you will unfortunately not be able to scale and hence it is a permission based leverage now we come to the two last leverages which are truly permissionless i have learned this all from almanac of naval ravikant excellent book that you should always read the two permissionless leverages are code and content 
while I will be out in Malaysia and Bali, the algorithms on YouTube and Instagram and LinkedIn and Twitter will still be working for me tirelessly every single day. My content is getting uploaded to servers which are around the world and there are robots and algorithms working for me even when I am not putting in the effort. And this is the best form of leverage that you can use to scale. So code and content are the two best forms of permissionless leverage. Whenever you want to grow a highly profitable business, always think about having both code and content in your arsenal and only then can you truly succeed. Another important thing to understand is margin, right? There are so many business ideas which look shiny on the outside but rarely make any profits. There are so many businesses like that and I can give you multiple examples. Here's a question for you, right? Pause this video and tell me in the comments what do you think. Imagine a business which has a hundred crore revenue every single year. Right? They're making 100 crore rupees every year, but they're only able to make a profit margin of 5%, just 5%, right? On the other hand, there is another business which is making 10 crores of revenue, one tenth of that, but they're having a profit margin of 50% every single year. Which business would you want to invest in? Would you rather invest in a 100 crore company because the number sounds bigger or would you invest in a 10 crore company? I would personally put my money on the 10 crore company, right? Why am I saying that? Both of them are making 5 crore of profit every single year. But the profit margin in this 10 crore business is 50%. That's a huge margin. And so if I look at the future and if I look at the risk involved, now if for the 100 crore revenue business, another player comes in and offers something for cheaper, they will have to reduce the prices as well which means that their profit margin would go even lower. And a 5% profit margin going down to four to two to one sounds like a death of a business. So always make sure that you look for businesses which have high margin. Do not look at the revenue numbers. Do not look at the shiny valuations. There are so many IPOs right now which are pumped up by these companies, investment bankers, and you need to be aware of the profit that they're actually making at the end of everything else. There's something called as EBITDA margin that you need to focus on. So your focus should always be in profit in hand. How much profit does this business actually generate? My business, which is market up, might have a very lower revenue than any big company out there, but we have a profit margin of over 70%. 70% profit margin on every product that we sell, which is our services. And that is an insane number. The only problem with my business is that it cannot be scaled infinitely because it is capped by how many people I have hired in my company, which is a permission based leverage that we've just talked about. Another important thing to understand is the Delta four framework. Whenever you're thinking of an idea, right? So this Delta four framework was coined by Kunal Shah. And the basic idea is whenever you have a market in which you create your product, your product should make lives easier for people by a difference of four. For example, you go to any railway station, right? If you talk about 10 to 15 years from today, people would actually go to the railway station and book a ticket. They used to stand in long queues. It would take them multiple hours to travel, wait there, book the ticket and then come back. And now you can do it effortlessly using the IRCTC website, right? Now, if you ask people, rate your experience out of 10 when you were standing in queues versus today with the IRCTC website. Experience of standing in queues could be about a 4 out of 10, right? But experience of booking tickets on IRCTC is about 8 out of 10 or 9 out of 10, right? There are still bugs, it does not look pretty and it is not usable as much, but it is still a gap of 4. Whenever you have a gap of four in user experience, that is when your product will win. And that is when it will grow automatically without you have to burn multiple crores of rupees every single year on advertisements. So whenever you're thinking of a business idea, always think about how easier will the lives of people be when they start using it versus the already existing solution. And that is the only way for you to grow. Another framework is the 10x value proposition. If your business is generating 10x more value for the client that you're working with, 
you can charge 10% of it and the client would happily pay you for it. That is very important for you to understand how can you create 10x more value for the client that you're working with. Now value is a very subjective thing. It could be in terms of money. It could be in terms of looking good, like having that status. Ki paas iPhone hai, paas nahi hai. And so if you can think about that, that will make your business idea very unique. Another thing to understand is who are you targeting to? Who is your target market? People pay when you solve their problem or you are solving an innate need that they have. Once you figure out your business idea, the next step is for you to determine who do you want to target, right? In the country that you live in, India, can be divided into four different categories depending on how much money they make and where do they live. Right? There's a report by Bloom Ventures, which is very popular right now. And I want you to have a look at this graph right here. This is what the Indian population looks like. Number one, you have India one alpha. This is the cream of the cream of India. These are people living in posh apartment societies in bungalows of the top metropolitan cities like Mumbai, Bangalore, you know, Delhi, and they are making a lot of money. On average, they are making over 30 lakh per annum or more. Right? These are people who are having Western values. They are speaking in English. They are happily subscribing to a lot of subscriptions like they're buying Zomato Gold, they're buying the Netflix subscription and they are actually paying money. There are just 10 million such people in India. Even though you might have seen we have 140 crore people, there's only one crore of that whole population who would actually pay for all the services out there. And then you have India One. Now India One has about 120 million people who are living in tier one and tier two cities and they do understand English, they are tech savvy and they're aspiring to make more money. They are using apps like Oyo, like Gpay and many others. On the other hand, you have India Two. Now India Two is about 100 million people which are living in tier two and tier three cities. These could be the likes of, you know, Lucknow, your Indore, then we have other cities as well. They don't make as much money and they are into vernacular languages. They are not very digitally able, but they are aspiring to become better every single day. And at the end, you have the India 3, which is the most of the rural and the tier 3 plus cities out there. Over 1.2 billion people of India live in this bracket. They are less educated. They are mostly into manual labor and they don't use most of the applications that you and me actually use. They are probably using YouTube or they end up using ShareChat or other applications like that. Although we say that India is the fastest growing economy in the world and India is the most populated country in the world as well, most of the people, 1.2 billion people in India, which comes under India 3 bracket, cannot be monetized. These are the people who are not making enough money for them to afford any of the services that you might want to sell them. I think that there is huge potential in India 1, people who are living in tier 1, tier 2 cities and they are aspiring to make more money, they are growing every single year and that is who you can target for your own business. Another thing to understand about India is the weird nature of the country. It works on a power law in which majority of the things are done in the economy by a very short number of people in India. For example, the top 1% of the country makes 22% of India's total income. That is an insane number and it is growing every single year. You can take any other example. 6.5% of people on UPI are doing more than 45% of all transactions. 45% of all flight tickets are booked by just the top 1% of India. 33% of all orders on Zomato are made by just 5% of the users on their platform. Here is a graph that depicts the user behavior. There are 700 million internet users in India, out of which about 500 to 600 are there on social media platforms like YouTube and Instagram. Only 250 to 300 million are using UPI. About 170 to 200 million are using e-commerce websites like Amazon and Flipkart. Only about 80 to 90 million are using ride hailing services along with food delivery services. And just about 60 million of them are there on OTT platform subscriptions. It's crazy how Netflix is offering their subscription for the cheapest around the world at just $2 per month and still they just have 6 million customers in India. You need to understand what really works in India and emotions 
play a huge role. If you can tap into the seven emotions people have, that is the only way that you'll be able to win. These seven sins or emotions are pride. People need to feel that status that I am bigger and you are smaller. The best example are the weddings. Best examples are luxury cars. Great example is the blue tick you see on the social media platforms. Number two, you have lust. There are applications like Tinder and Bumble and Chingari and they are solely working on the basis of tapping into the emotion of lust in people in India. Number three is greed. People want to make more money and if you can tap into their emotion of getting rich quick, then you can win as well. So applications like Rummy and Ludo and fantasy gaming work incredibly well in a country like India. Emotion number four, envy or jealousy. If you can make someone else jealous using a platform, then you will always stick to it. A great example is Instagram. People post the best highlights of their life, like them being on vacations, them buying a car, them being in a new home, them accomplishing new things, but never talk about the realities and the day-to-day -day mundane activities that they are doing. The fifth one is gluttony or hunger. The best example is Zomato and Swiggy. People are hungry and the best way for them to solve their hunger is to go on these apps like Zomato and Swiggy and curve their hunger. The sixth one is wrath. If you can allow people to go on your platform or product and spread hate, anger, be angry at people, that platform will have crazy engagement and no better example than Reddit along with X which is Twitter. And the last of them all is sloth. People are lazy and if you can help lazy people do things, your company will win, right? So urban company, you can take example of Zepto, take example of Blinkit, Big Basket, all of these are tapping into the emotion of laziness. People don't want to do things. And if you can help them with it and do that at a cheaper cost in India, then you will win. You can check out websites like Google Trends to understand what is it that people are searching for, but there are crazy rising trends right now. For example, there's a huge rise in people trying to reduce their weight. So there are a lot of weight loss companies which are making a lot of money. There's huge demand for companies offering certification and skill development courses to people who already have a degree from an archaic college college and education system, but they are not able to find any job. Upgrad is a great example of that. Another rising trend is people wanting to look good and health and wellness plays a big role in that. Another one is infertility. Because of the unhealthy lifestyle, people just sitting, people eating too much junk food, it is affecting the fertility rate of the Indians in India, because of which they are not able to conceive and hence they are looking for other options. So IVF and other treatments are booming right now in the country. So the best thing you can do when you're entering a commutative market is either make it cheaper, offer it for cheaper than what the industry monopoly does, or make it 10x better. You need to identify that one gap that you can cater to. I'll give you a great example. This is Whole Truth Foods, right? I don't know if you can see this or not. Whole Truth Foods is a great example of how do you enter into a market with tons of competitors. They are basically making chocolates and protein bars. And what their package says is this. The whole truth is this bar has all natural ingredients and they've listed down what is inside of this bar that you can read right here as well. Now what happens is they were able to identify that there's a growing number of companies who are mixing chemicals and things that are actually toxic for people like palm oil and other, you know, emulsifiers, for example. So what they did is they made everything clear. They were upfront with everything and they are honest. And that is how they differentiate from all the other players in the market, which are doing crores and hundreds of crores of revenue in the business of chocolate in India. And that is how they're able to disrupt this market, right? If you will look at the ingredients, they've pointed everything with 100% honesty. And that is why they're able to win in this market. At the end, it's all about how do you position yourself as a differentiating brand from the competitors out there. The best thing you can do is to design a business around you, around what do you like, around what is your interest, and how can you serve that particular market better. Let me also talk about some no risk, no upfront payment business ideas that you can start with today itself. The first one is consulting. Consulting is a great business model in which you can work with corporates or with individuals Maybe they are into studying abroad. Maybe they want to reduce their weight. They're looking for a weight plan that you can create for them, weight loss plan. And there are people who are looking for advice on how can they improve their marriage life. There are so many examples, right? You need to be able to have a skill and then start consulting people for it. 
The way this works is that you will be spending your time. That is the only constraint of this particular business idea. There is no upfront cost. For consulting, you can use tools like Calendly or TopMate and you can put them in any social media platform that you are a part of and tell people that this is what I offer. As you start creating more posts for yourself, as you start getting more eyeballs, you will automatically start making more money. But again, there are no expectations. There is no upfront cost, no risk involved and you can make money with your time. That is the first business idea. The second one is drop shipping. Again, we are not talking about using Alibaba or AliExpress. We are just talking about using tools like Misho, putting those products on your website and launching it because you already have a distribution channel. And then once people buy it, then you procure it from Misho and then order it and then send it to them. All you need to have is a simple Shopify website and you can start executing from day one itself. It's a very simple business model. You simply need to list articles on your own website, start sending those to the people who order it. There is no inventory, no problems and risks that you might have when you are producing everything yourself. The third business idea is creating digital products. Now digital products have the highest margin and the best example is Ankur Variku who recently talked about how he made 70 crore rupees, 70 crore rupees through selling courses. That's a huge amount. He got to the 70 crore number by having an excellent strategy wherein his videos were a way to develop trust with the audience and then he used ads to target the same audience and then reach out to them to buy his courses. I've made a separate video talking about his content strategy for how he's able to sell courses. Go watch that if you're interested. But the bottom line is you need to sort out distribution. Then you start selling courses, ebooks, you can start selling templates. A is low on Instagram and Twitter has done hundreds of thousands of dollars of revenue by simply selling Notion templates. Why? Because he was there on the platform, he got tons of eyeballs and he is just 19 or 20 at this point. The best thing that you can do for yourself is to build a distribution and start figuring out how can you sell digital products. There is no inventory, there is no upfront cost, there is no risk and there is massive margin. And it can be replicated over and over and over again. It can be bought by 1 lakh people and 1 crore people as well. A great example of selling ebooks is Shreya Patar. I interviewed her recently on my YouTube channel. You can watch it if you're interested. But basically, she basically made her Gumroad profile and started selling those ebooks on her Gumroad itself. She was not listing it on Amazon. Amazon can, you know, mess with the SEO of it. It will take a huge cut and it does not abide by the law of control. You are depending on Amazon to sell your copies. Instead, you are now creating your own storefront using Gumroad and you are selling it through that. So she was able to sell and make hundreds and thousands of dollars with just ebooks. A fourth business idea is that of SaaS tools. There are so many solopreneurs who are learning to code and they are just launching tools and products every single month. There's a very famous person called as Peter Levels that you can research more about. He basically launched one product every single month for 12 months in a row and he was able to make a lot of money doing that. He would basically find a need he would address that need by building a tool using his coding ability and then he would launch it on product hunt and he would get the initial users to test it out and then he would try to do organic marketing for the same and then make money with that project itself. So the best thing you can do is to build SaaS tools and products. If you want, I can interview a friend of mine who knows coding, who built an AI tool and is able to make multiple thousand dollars every month. Let me know if you want me to make a video about that in the comment section below. Also, if you're liking this video so far hit the like button share it with your friends but let's go back right SaaS tools have a barrier to entry you need to know how to code but they can also scale very well and you can make a lot of margin the incurred cost is very minimal and that is how the SaaS tool business works number five we have the broker business you can be a real estate broker you can also be an influencer marketer and you can basically connect people together and you can charge a commission doing that this is the easiest business you can start with you would basically be someone who is helping to people connect and just charging a commission in between both of them I've made a separate video talking about how do you get into real estate broking. 
I have also talked about influencer marketing with Ayush Shukla. So go watch those videos and you will learn a lot more about how these businesses operate and what you need to know if you want to start businesses in these industries. But these are again great businesses to be in. My friend Ayush was able to make multiple crores running his own agency Finet Media and you too can do this amazingly well if you understand how it all works. And the last business idea I want to talk about is a services agency which is my agency itself, Market Up. It's a social media agency in which we work with companies and we help them scale and grow on social media, right? That is our pitch. We work with over 30, 40 companies right now and we have employed freelancers. We only pay them when we get paid. That's how we started. Later on, we started hiring people as well, but it's a simple risk proof business that you can start with and start generating revenues from day one itself. So these were some popular business ideas that you can think about. It's all about the right market that you want to cater to and understanding who can actually pay the money that you want to become independent. Always understand if you want to make one crore in 2024, you need to understand if you want to sell a 1000 rupee thing to 10,000 people, that is a way for you to make one crore or you want to sell a 10,000 rupee thing to 1,000 people or you want to sell a 1 lakh thing to 100 people. It's all about that. Figure out what price point you want to sell to and then get in and go all in with it. Also, let me tell you a few skills that you need if you want to succeed as you are working on your business in 2024. Number one, you need to be exceptionally great at branding and storytelling. This is the most important thing that you need to perfect because if you don't have a compelling story, if you don't have a compelling brand, you just become a commodity and a commodity just does not make enough profit for you to become rich and make a lot of money doing that. So always think about how can you differentiate yourself? How can you create a story around what you do, right? For example, this, this packet of whole truth foods, normally the average price for a protein bar is about 120 rupees. They are selling it at about 140 or 150 and they are able to sell because they have an interesting positioning and they are able to build a story around what they believe in, which is being completely transparent with people out there. So that is what you need to understand. There are two books I want to talk about in general. Number one is Influence, The Power of Persuasion. Read that book. And number two, also read this book called as Brands and Bullshit to understand how can you truly build a brand in India. Secondly, you need to master sales. Again, this is a very vast topic. I will not go into it, but understanding sales and convincing the person in front of you is the most important skill if you want to win in the game of business. And you can get better at sales by sheer practice and by understanding how can you persuade someone? How can you make an offer that people just cannot say no to? How can you create no risk for the person who's saying yes to your offer? That is all that you need if you want to become better at sales. The third skill to learn is that of negotiation. When you will be building your company, you'll be hiring people, you'll be working with clients, you will be negotiating a lot. And so you need to understand how can you get better at negotiating? I made a separate video about negotiation, so watch that if you have not already. But the idea with negotiation is very simple. It is all about who has the upper hand, who can say no and just be okay with it. That is all that you need to know. At the end, you need to master just one more skill and that is product design. You need to understand how can you cleverly position your brand and have a unique USP that you offer that others are not offering. That is the only way that you will win. And that will only come when you understand your industry enough and you can create a unique pitch for the company and the product that you particularly have. This is all about building bootstrapped businesses. There is no need for you to raise capital if you create a distribution first company. You can raise it later on, like Physics Pala did. They raised $100 million in the first round itself at a $1 billion valuation. They recently also raised at about $3.5 billion. But the point is, build distribution first and the rest will follow. Let's talk about some tools that you will be using if you start building businesses and ideas the most important tool that will help you create effective writing this will help you generate more ideas is going to be chat gpt so go out there get the gpt4 subscription and start using it because this is very important for you to save time and generate loads of ideas it's a great tool for brainstorming so always use chat gpt also use canva Canva AI has a ton of features wherein you can create product demos, you can create product 
you know shoots and then you can use that on your own website on your own e-commerce platform as well you don't need to hire a social media manager you can simply schedule all of your social media posts using apps like buffer or later you can also you don't need a manager you can simply automate all the processes with the help of notion notion is a great platform that i have been using i've made a separate video on how to use notion watch that if you not have already but the basic idea is notion is a great tool for you to automate everything and create processes that work on its own without you having to hesitate and you know just feel bad about everything it will be automated it will be in front of you it will be structured if you want to build your own website you can use tools like bubble or you can also check out card through which you can build a website without knowing how to code there are so many things you can do with the help of these low code and no code platforms start using these and you'll be able to build amazing websites in just a few days without knowing how to code so bubble or card are the go-to ones Another one I talked about was Calendly to schedule meetings with potential clients, with potential people that you want to hire. And you can easily just paste this link wherever you are emailing people, you're reaching out to people. This tool will be very helpful for you to schedule meetings and get it automatically on your Google Calendar. The third tool that you'll be using a lot is going to be Zapier. If you want to automate multiple processes in your business, it's a great tool to research more about and you will find a lot of use cases of it in whatever business that you're a part of. Another important thing is to check out Gumroad as I've just talked about Shreya Patar used it. You can use Gumroad to launch your own digital website and you can have your online presence and you can sell through your Gumroad profile itself. That is all that you need. Create distribution, have a Gumroad profile, offer something, a ebook, template, you know, it could be a roadmap or it could also be a course that they can subscribe to. And that is how you'll be able to scale and get your true riches. There are some other tools as well, like you can use reference for creating invoices. You can use DocuSign for creating agreements and contracts. You can also use MailChimp for sending out emails and doing email marketing. And that is again an untapped domain where you can keep selling more and more to the same client and customer that you've been working with. And at the end, you can use Stripe or Razorpay to get all the payments in. Now let's talk about what I would do if I was starting out in 2024 to make one crore or even more. Number one, I would master a skill. It could be any skill, possibly a high paid skill. It could be UX design, it could be coding, it could also be social media marketing, digital marketing, it could be AI as well. And once I've learned that, I would start creating content around it on multiple social media platforms. And I would have a purpose that I want to educate 10 million students and I want to turn them into AI engineers or I want to turn them into designers or I want to help them with freelancing. I would have that goal. I would make content on multiple platforms. Once I have enough distribution, I will launch my digital products. It could be an ebook. It could be templates. It could also be my own course through which I can teach people better. I can have a live course or I can also sell recorded lectures to them. Afterwards, once you've mastered the courses, the digital products, you can also move into doing in-person events with people that you have been teaching things for a long time. And that is another way for you to create more money. I would also then start doing consulting with corporates. Once I have positioned myself as a thought leader, as a teacher, companies would want to invite me through their CSR initiatives to come and actually teach and educate their own employees. Massive opportunity over there. You need to learn more about it. One thing in all of the things I've just talked about is that they're all having high margin. There is no risk involved and you just need to put in your time at the start to build your brand. In 2024, brand is everything. If you do not have a brand, you have a commodity. And as soon as you realize that, the better it is going to be for you and your life. I hope this video helps. This was a complete in-depth guide about how can you get started by making your first crore in 2024. If you like this video, make sure that you hit the like button, click a screenshot of this picture of this video and post it on social media and tag me on Instagram and LinkedIn and YouTube and Twitter and share the one insight that you had by watching this entire video. I hope you were taking notes. I wish you all the best. Please go out there, execute, learn from me and other books and other creators. But at the end, do not forget to execute. Always remember that there are people right now in this world which are dumber than you, are not as smart as you, but are making 10x more money than you. 
because they are not smart enough to doubt themselves. They are not smart enough to overthink. And the best thing you can do is to go out there and execute today. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. If you're still watching, write in the comment section. I was till the very end. I love you all. Thank you so much. I'll see you again.